This is an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. Stephen Paul Leva is no stranger to this show. He's been on with us several times. He's the author of the Fixer novels. The first one was Blood is Pretty, and the second one is Hollywood is an All-Volunteer Army. Blood is Pretty has just come out in audio book form, narrated by Jonah Cummings, and both Stephen and Jonah are on with us now via the wonderful world of Skype-to-Skype communications. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Peter. Nice to have uh, both of you on. Let's start with you, Steve. Uh, we've talked about your book uh, several times in the past. Uh, we've, we talked about it in manuscript form. So what's it like now having it out as an audio book? Oh, it's a whole different dimension, and it's, it's quite a delight because to, uh, you know, uh, well, literature started as a, uh, as a verbal thing, wasn't it? The, uh, sitting around the campfires and telling stories and Homer and what have you. So every writer, or at least this writer, when he writes, he thinks of the voice. He wants to create a voice. Um, and there's a voice in his head. But uh, when you're uh, lucky enough to get a book uh, put into this form and you get a, an actor and a narrator as fine as Jonah here, you get a whole new perspective on it. And it's a lot of fun. You get to sit back and enjoy the, uh, the warmth from the fireplace and uh, immerse yourself in someone else's voice and his interpretation of your characters and and what's happening and when he gets dead on to what was in your head you're delighted and when he surprises you and makes something better than what was in your head you're even more delighted and that's the experience I had with Jonah. Now Steve you're all the way in California Jonah you're on the other side of the country and I'll put this question to Jonah how did you two guys hook up? Uh, actually it was through the publisher Crossroad Press um, uh, David uh, Wilson had contacted me and uh, asked if I was interested in, uh, in doing a book for him. Now, did you read the book beforehand, or, or was this just, you know, uh, voice for hire, as it were? Usually I read the uh, materials before I uh, go into it as part of the research, uh, read the complete book, and then I'll go back and uh, actually highlight portions, um, uh, the characters, uh, different scenes within the chapters, um, if, if it's possible, which it was in this case, uh, to talk to the author to try to get a, um, a feeling for the book and his voice. Uh, pardon the pun, is there ever a time when the two of you are not on the same page? Uh, I I Go ahead, think, well, I, I was going to say I didn't think so. There were a couple of times where I wanted to make sure um, that I had a character down, that I was uh, envisioning uh, what Stephen had uh, in his head in terms of the, uh, a character and how that uh, particular person should sound. Uh, because narrators, you know, a lot of times we're asked, well, how do you remember all of these characters and what voice to do and that type of thing? And what I try to do is I try to actually visualize a character in my mind, uh, their mannerisms, their personality. Uh, you know, I go a lot on the physical description that the author provides. Um, but it, there's a picture that comes into one's head, and it's very easy to drop into that character once that 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 visualization takes place. Now, Steve, your thoughts on, you know, taking your baby here, the book of Blood is Pretty, and, and handing it over to someone else. Now, again, you work in L.A., and you're used to this situation when something goes from either the printed word to the stage or the printed word to the screen. Uh, what's it like in this case for you? Well, we worked closely uh, through both email, uh, email, email and uh, chatting on the phone now and then. Um, but the process was basically uh, technical uh, on pronunciations of words and things like that. Uh, and then every once in a while we would get into character. And Jonah and I had a discussion before he started about the different characters. And he asked me specific questions of what I thought of these characters and potentially who I had in mind, say if I was to cast it in a, in a movie or something. And then he created his own characters. And like I say, on some of them, I'm sorry, there's a 
the police are coming to get me. I was about to say, are you being surrounded? Is that uh, it? it could it could well be. I, I shouldn't have taken that mounds bar from the Walgreens, <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, uh, he'll he would surprise me sometimes with his interpretation of a character. It wasn't wrong. It just wasn't what was in my head. And um, specifically, the character of Rowie, who's sort of the fixer's Watson. And it really uh, took me aback for a moment. And then I got into it. And now, of course, that's the voice of Rowie. It, it absolutely was a, um, it was a interpretation of the character a little against the type that was in my head. But it turned out to be actually right, because uh, the type that was in my head wouldn't have been proper for how I described the character in this character's past. And it made Rowie more interesting. And it also his voice for Rowie made the byplay between Rowie and Fixer, which sometimes comes into moments of what I call vaudeville, back and forth little humorous bits, even funnier because of the quality of Rowie's voice. So that was delightful. And another character, Petey, who's sort of like the um, uh, character of Q for my character, the Fixer. He obviously works for a Secret Service agency back in Washington, and he makes things... And the fixer, he's an old friend, he calls upon him and asks him to do things for him. And uh, that I was very specific in that character that when he talks, he almost talks very loud all the time. And Jonah was able to adapt that very well. But then he had to come up to the point where there was one moment where Petey, who's a brilliant scientist, has to explain something to the fixer. And it's a long explanation, and that can't all be shouted. But it's also where Petey is shown to be brilliant, where before he's been sort of a comical character. So Jonah took the voice that he created and brought it down a little bit, kept it peaty, but brought uh, a new understanding of the character, which the fixer comments on in, in the book. So emotionally, it worked very well. And the other thing I want to say is that I, think I talked to Jonah about that, that a book like this, because it's in the first person, fixer is the narrator of the book, it's not just a narration of that part, it's also a performance of the whole book. He's a character throughout the whole book as well as the other characters, as the narrator. And he did, uh, I, I really love what he did with it. Well, Jonah, as someone who does this for a living, who narrates books, is that a difficulty, doing a, a story that is told in first person? No, actually, I prefer doing a first person uh, narrative. Um, I'm a big fan of the old uh, detective uh, novels. And a lot of times those books were written in the first person. Um, where the protagonist uh, was, you know, narrating the entire story. So this was fun to do. Very quickly, Steve, uh, give us in a nutshell what the, 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 the plot of Blood is Pretty for those who hadn't heard when you were on the program in the past. Well, it's the, the uh, my hero is called The Fixer, uh, with two X's, as I always point out, uh, to distinguish him from all the other fixers in life. But he basically works in Hollywood and he works off Hollywood. He fixes the sins and the problems uh, and the escapades of the Hollywood elite. And sometimes those in Hollywood who aren't the elite yet, but he's pretty sure they're going to be there. Because he charges a lot of money to do this. And when it's somebody that's up and coming, what he does is uh, contracts basically to get a small percentage of their income for the rest of their careers. Uh, and he will bend rules and he will bend the law to do that for them. It's mysterious as to where he came from, but you get the feeling that he's had a sort of a spy background. He knows how to do things. He knows how to con people. And he likes to live well. And this is how, this is sort of the profession he's fallen into. Now, but the key is, in each story, always something happens that, that uh, riles up his sense of the moral. And he, then he becomes your classic knight errant, and he's going to solve the problem. Uh, in, in this case, uh, a young geek, film geek, who had written a treatment for a film that a director wanted to pay him off for and then get him out of the way and claim credit for. So the fixer was hired to go pay off this geek, uh, and the geek wouldn't be paid off. Uh, later, the geek winds up dead and dismembered, with the blood, the pretty blood, spread out all over his apartment. Ah, uh, thus the title, Blood is blood Pretty. pretty. Gotcha. So the fixer's upset that his intervention in this, he's pretty sure led to this kid's death. So therefore, he's going to not avenge it so much as to correct it and find out why this happened. 
Okay. And in doing so, he solves the problem. Well, let me play matchmaker here for a little bit, because as I said, the, the first book is out, Blood is Pretty. Uh, any plans, Jonah, to do Hollywood as an all-volunteer army? Oh, uh, well, I haven't been asked. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have to talk to David, the publisher, about that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, you know, I have not had a chance to uh, read the uh, second book yet, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And one last question for you, Steve, and that is you mentioned the fact uh, that uh, Jonah has brought different nuances to your characters. Uh, does that affect, or will that affect, because as you know, I'm an evangelist for these characters that you've written. I've read both books, and I love them both. Uh, if you write more in the future, does does uh, what Jonah, or what Jonah has done, will that affect the fixer in the future? I think that's inevitable. I think, especially, like I say, with the character Rowie, I don't think it would, as I'm, as I'm writing it, that's just the voice I will hear now. Uh, but as the core of the character did not change, and Jonah captured that, then I, I don't think the core of the character that I created would change. Um, so in, in that aspect, those are just the voices that will be in my head, which, would make it, which makes it better for me, because at the moment the only voice in my head is me, and, and, I, and on occasion I can bore myself. Well, t tell me, Jonah, how does it feel to be a writer's inspiration? Uh, it, it's... Uh, a, a flattering <laughs> i you know it really it's uh it, it, it's a joy to to do these audio books and and for this particular novel it was fun um you know the, the characterizations that i had in my head for the fixer was was sort of a, a mix of jack nicholson um and uh you know with roe it was kind of uh funny at first but you know here's an ex Mossad guy that's capable of killing you and then serving up a perfect souffle uh, and he's gay <laughs> and Ann Isley, uh, you know, a lot of times it's difficult, um, you know, in the narration world uh, for men to do women and women to do men. Uh, but uh, I conjured up, uh, you know, the characterization of a smart Marilyn Monroe. Uh, exactly. Edgy uh, for Ann Isley. So, you know, doing all of these characters was, was a lot of fun, and, and it, helped, it does help bring the book to to life for me. The book is Blood is Pretty, and very quickly, Steve, uh, one can get it how? Well, you can get it at crossroadpress.com and also uh, springbrookdigital.com, uh, available on both sites. Uh, eventually, it'll be on Amazon because it'll be carried by audible.com, but uh, it's not quite there yet. Uh, but uh, to, directly from the publisher or from Springbrook Audio, and then I think other audio companies will We'll pick it up. It just seems to be natural. Uh, it's uh, deliverable as an MP3 for your iPod or your MP3 player or to play on your computer uh, or however you would like. Excellent. Steve and Jonah, thank you very, very much for being on the program with us. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Author Stephen Paul Leva and narrator Jonah Cummings. The book is Blood is Pretty, and it's available for $12.99 at Crossroad Press and at Spring Brook Digital. You can go to my website at thestufffile.com, click on the Stuff File program, and then the episode number for this show, which is show number 0078, and you'll find links to Stephen's blog and the previous sites mentioned. You've just heard an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. To hear any or all of the full hour-long shows, visit thestufffile.com. Stuff is spelled S-T-U-P-H. That's thestufffile.com. A presentation of Flying Fish Communications.